Welcome to Excel and Statistics video number 52. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel and click on my college website link and you can download the workbook, Business 210, Chapter 04. Don't forget also to download the PDFs. Uh, we're talking about probability and a lot of definitions and rules and stuff, and so I have my handwritten notes there also. Oh, Venn diagrams. We were talking about the probability of getting two heads in three flips, and we've uh, shown this here in terms of a Venn diagram. There's a Venn A, get two heads in three flips, there's a probability. Everything else in this sample space is denoted as A uh, with a little C right there. Everything else is the complement, that's what that C stands for. So if we know the probability of getting uh, two heads and three flips, can we figure out the probability of not getting two heads? You bet. All the rest of that uh, space here represents the probability 0.625. Oh yeah, we just take all the probability minus the probability of that an event, that one single event, and boom. <clears throat> there is our complement rule officially. You can either say what's the probability of A and take one minus not a, or complement of A, or you can calculate the, the probability for complement of A by taking 1 minus A. Now, that's for a one single event there, but sometimes you're talking about two events. Two events. And we need to talk about dating only one person. That's how I like to think of mutually exclusive. Two events are said to be mutually exclusive if the events have no sample points in common. Now let's think about rolling a die. Odd and even. Here's the set, all the sample points for rolling an odd, and here's sample points for rolling an even. That's for just one step, right? The roll of one single die. Are there any of the odds that are in common with the evens? No way. Those events are mutually exclusive. No, they share no sample points. <clears throat> All right, um, let's look at another example. Uh, event B, oh, you have brown hair, we'll note, uh, denote that as B. And event H, you have hazel eyes. Ah. When we get all of our numbers here, there is some overlap. These are Venn diagrams. That little section there means that both, that means and, that's the intersection. These events are not mutually exclusive. This is called a union. This whole thing right here is called a union. And the union of B and H is the event containing all sample points belonging to B or H or both. And when we talk about union, that's the whole thing. When we talk about intersection, that'll just be the little point right there. But when we talk about union, again, I like to list all the possibilities you might see here. This textbook uses union here like this. I use or. Uh, union, it could mean this one or that one or both. The symbol, or. It also could be listed as at least one. Right? So when you're talking about brown hair uh, and hazel eyes, when you say, uh, what's the probability of at least one? It could be just this one, or just that one, or both. Now, intersection, uh, that's this little piece right here. Uh, given two events, B and H, the intersection of B and H is the event containing the sample points belonging to both. Here's the words they use, intersection and joint. Later when we talk about the probability for this, it'll be joint probability. But they use all sorts of words. The intersection, you could say A and B, which is what I tend to use. You could use this symbol for intersection, which is what the textbook uses, and, both, joint, concurrent. Also, um, uh, both must be true, right? Because what do we have? We have two conditions here. There's brown. Uh, brown hair and hazel eyes. Both must come out to be true. When you're looking at the person, you say, do they have brown hair? True. Do they have hazel eyes? True. So that's that little piece right there. B intersection H, uh, and I'll tend to use this, uh, B and H, because both have to be true intersection. That's that little piece. The whole thing is what? The union. B union H or B or H, have brown hair, or hazel eyes, or both. Now, uh, we're going to have some formulas for this. Here's our formula for uh, the 
or or the union. Now watch this. We have a B and an H, and here's the probability of B, and here's the probability of H. Why in the world do we have to subtract that little teeny piece there? Ah, because we do not want to double count. So when you're calculating your or or union probabilities, you're always going to have to ask your question, are the events mutually exclusive? If they're not, don't double count. You have to subtract that little extra piece there. B and H, remember, because there's a 1 here or a true here and a true here for the people in here. So by subtracting just that little piece right there, you're get, getting rid of the double counting. When the events are mutually exclusive, you simply add. Let's look at an example. Here are some flights. We are the early on time later canceled. Add them up our frequencies. There it is. Uh, calculate the event early. Oh, well, simply we take, uh, we already did this relative frequency. Take that one divided by 1,000, we get 0.1. Notice these are all mutually exclusive, right? Can you be early and on time? Can you be late and canceled? No way. Ah, so or is easy. What's the probability of early or on time? Um, or or the union, you simply add mm -mm, and divide by the total, you get 0.9. That's for mutually exclusive. Now let's look at a non-mutually, not mutually exclusive. Oh, we have a travel survey of people who visit Seattle. Visit the Space Needle, SN. Visit Pike's Place Market, PP. The probability from the survey of Space Needle was 0.45. The probability of Pike's Place was 0.65. Ah, but the probability that they were in both is 0.25. Both and intersection. So when we calculate, what do we have to do? Ah, these are not mutually exclusive. There is some overlap, so you simply have to subtract. Now, I didn't put the equals 0.85, but that's what that one equals right there. We'll do it in Excel later, too. Must subtract so we don't double count. You see that right there? That's the overlap. Remember, uh, you'll see this as at least one or even either site. What's the probability that they visited either site? All right, um, we want to talk about conditional probability. The probability of an event, given that another event has already occurred. Let's just go to a great example. If you pull a queen, you have an event, queen, from a deck of cards. What's the probability? Oh, well, there's four total, so I could get one of those four out of 52. That's the probability of pulling one queen. But what if you've already, when you pull that card, you actually get a queen? You want to then ask the, the question, given that I've already pulled one cr queen, what's the probability that I'll pull a second queen? Now, one way I remember this is I remember that the sample space has changed. As soon as you pull a queen from this, how many are left? 51. So the probability for the next queen becomes 3 divided by 51. That's after an event has already occurred. You're sitting there at the table. You have the first queen. That's it. Calculating from the outset, pulling two straight, will involve that we know the multiplication rule, which we'll learn in just a minute. But conditional probability, no, no problem. It just means given that. And that's how we're going to uh, denote it. Probability of A, given that B has already occurred. Next uh, page here. Um, we'll do that one over in Excel. Uh, we, joint, I don't know why they made such a big deal in the textbook. Joint probability is just that little piece right there. And we'll see how to make joint probability tables over in Excel. You can look at it here, too. Uh, but multiplying, because we got to figure out how to multiply. I want to know what's the probability that can pull two straight queens. Ah, but before we do multiplying, we have to talk about independence. Independence. Events are independent if the occurrence of one event does not affect the other. Here's the rule of independence. Probability of B equals probability of B given that A's already occurred. What does that mean? Oh, well, this proves if they're equal, uh, because if they're independent, then the fact that A occur occurred already has no effect on B. So this is uh, how you prove that 
the two events are independent. Now remember our uh, queen example wouldn't be true because once you pull that first queen, uh, that affects the next queen being pulled. All right, so independence, one event does not affect the other. How about rolling a six? Does that uh, affect the, the next one? No, it does not affect the next roll. When you roll a six, boom, it's there. You pick up the die. It's still one six when you roll it. Whether or not Whole Foods market stock price goes up does not affect whether Google's goes up. Now, there are some stocks that have a dramatic effect, you know, uh, uh, maybe like you know the car part the car industry that has all these car part companies that are completely related but some uh, companies like these two here probably uh, these two events are independent dependent that just means the occurrence of one event affects the occurrence of another event our queen example is a great way to remember that once uh, you pull that first one the sample space is changed both the uh, denominator and numerator change all right multiplication law here it is oh yeah multiplying is the and a the probability of a and b equals in our textbook they say the probability of a intersection b ah so you always take probability of b times the probability of a given that b's already occurred that is the rule for multiplying or you could do it this way too if you're trying to calculate a and b you would simply take a, a probability of a times, and in this case, it's the opposite of this, probability of b given that a has already occurred. Now, we talked about independence. Here's the rule, right? If they're independent, means they have no effect on each other. So uh, b would equal b given that a has already occurred, right? Because this is a separate event, and if it has no effect, then these two are equal. Ah, that makes the multiplication law if, they're in, if two events are independent slightly uh, more straightforward, just A times B. Now here's a big hint. Uh, I just remember AND is multiplying and OR is plus. So when the question says AND, I just say, okay, I gotta go look at my multiplying rules. When the question is OR, I gotta go look at my plus rules. Now there are some situations uh, uh, later where we'll have to use both rules, but they're, they're individual rules and you do them in different steps. Let's see what this next slide. Uh, now, one last thing before we go over to Excel, we got to figure out how to calculate conditional probabilities uh, different than 4 divided by 52 for that first queen and 3 divided by 51 for the second queen. Here's We're just going to take it from our multiplying rule. Well, this is the rule for multiplying, right? Well, what if we just divide both sides by this, right? We get this. So the probability, so you, we can solve, I'm sorry, we want to divide both sides by this because we want to solve for this. What if we want to solve for this? If only I could read the PDFs. If I want to solve for this, I divide both sides by this A, whoop, and what do I get? The probability of B, given that A's already occurred, is the AND divided by probability of A. All right, uh, and here's officially the formulas because you can do it uh, if you're tr trying to calculate A, given that B has already occurred, you say A and B divided by the probability of B. If you're trying to calculate B, given that A's occurred, then you say probability of A and B. Notice that both of these are the same. It's just the, the denominator that changes. Uh, now, let's look at a couple examples of the multiplying rules on paper before we go over to Excel. Here's our whole food market and our Google example. Here's the probability that this one will go up. Here's the probability that this one will go up. Since uh, we're assuming that they're independent, what do we do? We just multiply, boop, boop, and we get 35 times uh, point, point 0.2, and we get point 0.07. So the probability that they'll both go up is point 0.07. How about uh, the product, if we had a defective product coming off of the assembly line, assembly line from past data, we know that it's point 0.02. But now, we want to randomly select three products and all three are defective. The way we can calculate, and this will help, right, because if we do a random sample and we get three products, the probability when we multiply those .02s together is very small. So that would indicate that they're probably, this isn't random, there probably is some 
uh, problem and we need to investigate it. But that's another example of the multiplying when we have independent events. Now, now what about that queen example? We want the probability that we select two straight queens. We take uh, the probability of selecting that first queen, but then conditional probability, given that We've already pulled that first queen. What's the probability of the second one? Well, we already did it. 4 divided by 2 times 3 divided by 51. And we get uh, 0.004525. So that's a probability of pulling two straight, given that this was a conditional probability. Let's look at another example. Uh, Seattle survey, we looked at this one a little bit earlier. Ah, visit the probability that we visit the Space Needle and the probability that we visit Pike place market. We had a 0.45 and a 0.65. We also had the probability that they visited both. And now we want to ask the question, what's the probability that they visited the Space Needle given that they've already visited Pike's Place Market? We simply uh, take our AND and then we divide it by the probability for going to Pike's Place Market. We get 0.25 and a 0.65 down here. We make that division and we get 0.3846. All right, so that's just a little bit about the laws of probability uh, looking at our handwritten notes. Now, next video, we'll do this in Excel. See you next video.